All right, lecture two of the integumentary system. So we looked at the epidermis, uh, which is the layer above uh, the outermost layer of the skin, also called the cutaneous membrane. Uh, then we do uh, dove down deeper into the dermal layer. Um, the dermal layer is a thicker region. It's deeper than the epidermis, composed of that dense irregular connective tissue. Uh, the upper layer of the dermis has those finger-like projections called the dermal papillae, and it's those projections that help anchor uh, the epidermis. Um, the dermal papillae also cause the ridges in the overlying epidermis, and you uh, see those ridges as fingerprints. And we did that fingerprint uh, analysis in Anatomy Lab. Um, fingerprints. Are, are, are those spiral and concentric, concentric patterns that increase uh, the friction to provide better gripping of surfaces. Now, the dermis also contained elastic fibers. Uh, the collagen fibers are flexible, but offer that great resistance to overstretching, and they prevent the skin from being torn, while the elastic fibers stretch and allow movement of underlying muscles and joints while also at the same time maintaining that normal skin tension. All right, so our next uh, layer would be the hypodermis. Um, the hypodermis is uh, basically below the skin, hypo meaning below dermis skin, so it's below the skin, uh, subcutaneous, subcutaneous uh, below the skin, so it's, all, it's also called the superficial fascia, and fascia is uh, Latin for a band. In anatomy, it's a sheet of connective tissue. So uh, uh, we have that fatty adipose tissue, so fatty tissue which stores fat and anchors the skin. Um, you have areolar tissue and, and embedded in there as the adipose cells. And you have different patterns of accumulation of those tissues in males and females. So you can picture it in males, uh, where males would typically store fat in their abdominal region, and then females typically store a lot of fat in the hip region. Uh, the hypodermis is subcutaneous tissue. Uh, basically, uh, we also know that we have those subcutaneous injections. Um, those are performed by what we call hypodermic needles. And, and we'll look about, uh, at that a little bit later. later. Um, the hypodermis is composed of loose connective areolar tissue, adipose tissue, and we know that adipose tissue is a supply of energy storage, and it could supply a lot more energy than one gram of glucose. Six times more energy can be obtained from fat than it can from sugar. Uh, it's the storage form that can be called upon uh, when a necessary to supply the body with molecules for cell respiration. Adipose tissue also helps insulate the body, protect it uh, in temperature regulation. Um, also, you could have some force being applied and it will protect from force being applied. So uh, excessive adipose tissue uh, is when you have a, a human being that is obese. As far as skin color, there are three skin pigments. There's melanin. Uh, melanin is the most important. It's the main pigment. Uh, then you have carotene. Carotene is the orangish pigment coloration. Um, carotenes you obtain from uh, carrots and yellow vegetables. Uh, and you also have hemoglobin and hemoglobin is the pigment that would supply that pink coloration to the skin. Um, if you lack any of these pigments, you of course are albino or have albinism. So melanin being the main pigment uh, in granules passes from melanocytes and it's the same in the number of all races or ethnicities. And uh, they'll go to keratinocytes in the stratum basal layer. Uh, and in there you have digested lysosomes. Uh, 
that uh, they are digested by lysosomes. Remember that those are the organelles in the cell that are kind of like garbage disposal. They have intracellular digestive enzymes. Uh, you have variations in color. So we looked at genetics and we looked at skin coloration. So it's uh, multiple factors that play a role in skin coloration. Um, but basically it all comes down to the amount of melanin produced as coded for in the genes or multiple genes. Um, melanin is, can also be passed to other epidermal cells. Uh, that results in tanning, um, the formation of patches of melanin called freckles. Um, trying to think some other things about melanin. Uh, in addition to that, it, uh, skin coloration or, or melanin granules play a role in protection of ultraviolet uh, light. And, and it also is a production of vitamin D. So there you can see as, as you um, get darker skin, that's a way of your body trying to uh, uh, protect itself against UV radiation. All right, our next thing is skin and its appendages. So these are derived from the epi epidermis, but are uh, extended into the dermis. And basically what we have here are hair and hair follicles, sebaceous glands or oil glands, sweat glands are called sudoriferous glands, and you have fingernails. So, uh, Hair, nails, and glands are structures of epidermal origin, even though many of them, especially hair follicles and glands, are largely in the dermal layer. So here you can see uh, a picture of appendages of skin. There you have that recti pili muscle. You have a, a oil gland or a sebaceous gland here. Here you have an eccrine sweat gland. Uh, you have that hair follicle. You have the hair roots, all right? So those are some of the skin appendages. So a little thing about nails. Um, nails themselves are of the protein fiber keratin. They are hard. Um, nails grow from special epithelial cells at the base of the nail in the region called the nail root. So here you can see the nail root. And then what happens is these cells become keratinized as they grow out over the nail bed. And if you look on the diagram here, here you can see that nail bed. Um, the visible portion of the nail is called the nail body. Um, the cuticle is the fold of skin that hides the nail root. Sometimes that skin grows a, a little excessively and you cut, cut it back, you cut your cuticles back. Um, ordinary growth for nails is about one millimeter per week. Um, the pink coloration of a fingernail is due to the vascularized, vascularized dermal tissue that you find uh, beneath the nail. So here you can see that, that vascular tissue beneath the nail there. Um, the whitish color of the half moon shaped base, so if you look at your, at your thumbnails, you can see that white coloration, kind of that half moon shaped appearance, or the lanula, uh, that results from the thicker layer of the rapidly produced cells in that region of the, of the, of the fingernail. Hair and hair follicles, uh, these are, are complex. Um, they are derived from the epidermis and go down in the dermal region. Um, hair is found everywhere, but on the palms, soles, nipples, and, and parts of the genitalia. So um, it's after puberty when the sex hormones are made in, in larger quantities that there is a noticeable hair in the axillary and pubic regions of both sexes. In males, you get beard development and other parts of the body may also become quite hairy. Uh, when women produce uh, more of the male sex hormone than usual, they can develop uh, hirsutism, which is a condition that is characterized by excessive uh, body and facial hair. Of course, hormone injections and procedures can uh, kill those hair roots as possible treatments to that disease. So um, hairs project from a complex of structures called the hair follicle. And if you, if you look here, you can see hair follicles. 
So here you can see the hair follicle there, the hair bulb and the follicle. Um, it's that hair follicles that are formed from epidermal cells but are located in the dermis of the skin. The hair follicles themselves are found in a structure called the hair matrix. Get my little thing out, a uh, little pointer out, uh, the hair matrix. So if you look on the diagram, you can see the hair matrix extending over here. And then on the uh, slide, you can see it over here. Uh, that is located at the base of the hair. Um, these cells are continually dividing and they produce new cells that form hair. Uh, the cells at first are nourished by dermal blood vessels, but as the hair grows up and out of the follicles, the cells are pushed further away from the source of nutrients and then the, the uh, hair itself uh, will become keratinized. So uh, basically keratinized, you have that keratin fibers. So keratin is the protein that makes up your hair and fingernails. And then what would happen is the hair would eventually die. Um, the portion of the hair within the follicle is called the root. The portion of the hair that extends beyond the skin is the shaft of the hair. Um, the lifespan of an eyelash is usually three to four months, while the scalp um, can have hair that lasts for three to four years. Uh, once its lifespan is complete, the eyelash or the hair is shed and regrows. And then, of course, in males, you could get baldness that occurs um, when the hair on the head fails to regrow. Um, that would relate to baldness. Alopecia uh, is basically uh, means hair loss, and it could have many causes. Um, you could have androgenetic alopecia, which is uh, male pattern baldness, genetically inherited. Um, alopecia arata is characterized uh, by a sudden onset of patchy hair loss. Functions of hair, uh, it provides warmth, so it's uh, less in man than other mammals. Uh, sense light, touch of skin, and protection of the scalp. So it could provide warmth when the erectile pili muscle in the uh, skin, that smooth muscle will contract and that contraction of the muscle will cause the hair follicle to stand on end, but produce a, a little bit of heat there due to that contraction. And when that muscle contracts, you get goose pimples. Um, there are parts, there's the root embedded in the skin and the shaft would project above the skin. Hair is made up of keratin. And then you have those three concentric layers called the medulla, the cortex, and the cuticle. Um, you have types of hair. Uh, you have vellus, which is fine, short hairs, intermediate hairs, and terminal hairs, which are long, coarser hairs. Hair growth averages about two millimeters per week. And when it's active, it's growing. When it's resting, uh, then it has a resting phase, and then it would shed. Um, hair loss is uh, you have types. You have male pa uh, pattern baldness, which we discussed. And then you have thinning, and you get a thinning hairline. Uh, that, that, of course, is with increased stage. And then you have hair coloration, and hair coloration is the amount of melanin found in the hair for black or brown or distinct form of melanin for red. Uh, white hair is decreased melanin, and air bubbles in the medulla, hmm, getting gray, and then genetically determined through influence uh, both by hormones and the environment. Sebaceous glands. Uh, sebaceous glands are oil glands. They are on the entire body except the palms and soles. Uh, they produce sebum by a, a holocrine secretion. And uh, this, is, this, of course, then produces oils and allows for uh, lubrication and water pr protection. So um, oils, like on, on the surface of plant leaves, uh, will help prevent uh, water uptake or water loss. Sweat glands are on the entire skin surface except for the nipples and part of the external genitalia. Uh, sweat glands help prevent overheating. Um, they could provide 500 cubic centimeters to 12 uh, liters per day. Uh, it is mostly water. Humans are most efficient. Uh, only mammals have these, but humans of, of the mammals, humans are the most efficient with sweat glands. And they are produced in response to stress and heat, so that's what causes us to sweat. And if you have any questions,